Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to explore the 16 inch external screen from Inuk, and it's a WXGA, which we'll explain in just a minute. Um, and that gets to a good point. This is completely unsponsored. I don't even know how to pronounce the name. We were also going to review this uh, monitor from Airzopa, but uh, we found this other monitor from Inuk today that's an 18.5 inch, which is larger than the Airzopa one. And it's actually cheaper. It took a 20% price drop in the last few days. And there's also a $30 coupon on it, making this about 200 Canadian for an 18 inch portable monitor. That is a steal of a deal. It's about 150 US. And we will have a review of that monitor, the Ingnock 18.5 inch in a few days. It's big drawback by the way, is that even though it's a larger screen physically, it's actually a lower resolution. There's fewer dots on the screen. All right, so let's get to unboxing this and setting this up with a laptop. Uh, we will also explain that you can run this and one of the primary uses for this with game consoles. So people want to connect their PlayStations, Xboxes, Nintendo Switches. This is an ideal application. This is going to a corporate customer uh, and they need it because when they're in the field or where they're traveling even in, in you know nice hotels, um, running off a laptop uh, just isn't enough screen area. They need something else and hopefully this is going to do it. And the reason we bought it is it's WUXGA. And you might think, boy, that's a lot of letters. And I don't know what that means. Basically, it's 10% larger. So instead of being a 15.6 inch monitor, uh, this is a 16 inch. And the display size, instead of being 1,080 dots tall, is actually 1,200 dots tall. And you might not think that that extra 100 uh, and some pixels makes a big difference. But I can tell you as somebody that's worked and sold monitors for a lot of, a lot of years, it really can. Uh, and especially if you're traveling, that extra 10% may make a difference to you. It doesn't cost very much more, so why not get it? And on the back of the box, there's just basic explanation of how to connect it to the various devices that you want. There's nothing else of use on the box. Okay, so let's take a look at the unit itself. It has what they call a smart cover, which I presume means when it's closed, the magnet, which is definitely there, kicks in and uh, turns the screen off to save uh, power. The rubber feet are the bottom. That's a pretty good clue that it goes like that. And as a result, the smart cover can go on a number of ways. Voila, just tent the thing. Now on this unit, there are speakers at the back here. There is an HDMI, uh, specifically mini HDMI port, and uh, that will work uh, with audio and video, of course. And these are full function USB-C ports. So they will do everything from power to video to audio if the, your system supports it. On the other side are the control buttons. A bit strangely, although that's not really a problem, what they've done is put the uh, menu button in the middle and that's up and down. Let's test it out. Okay, so here we have a HDMI to mini HDMI. We have a USB-C to USB-C, and this is quite interesting. This is USB to USB-C, but it doesn't support video. It's only for power, so keep that in mind. Charging block. So if you decide in the future that, ah, portable's not your thing, you really wanna just use it in the office, those two screws are for these two holes, so you can mount this. Now, as we said, our use is corporate. So we are going to connect this uh, to a laptop. Now, if your laptop is USB-C, USB-C also will put enough power through that you do not need to have the uh, uh, AC block on it. You can simply use just the USB-C cord. If, however, like this laptop, I don't have a USB-C port, well, I do, but not one that supports power out uh, and video, in other words, Thunderbolt, because I don't have that, I'm going to use the HDMI to mini HDMI, and I'm gonna to have to use the uh, power charger block. And while we're here, let's just go over the others. Uh, Nintendo Switch, you can see the setup for it, not very challenging. Xbox, the same. iPhone, if you wanna connect it. All right, even the Raspberry Pi. I've had a few of these, they're kinda neat. There, and you can see my computer's flashing. Yeah, wow, it just picked it up, plug and play. Look, here's an interesting thing already. This screen is a 1080, this is a 1080p laptop. In other words, there's 1080 dots all the way to the bottom. Look at this, 
This has 1200. So because it's just cloned it, what it's done is it's just left black bars at the top and that's fine, except we can use that space because this monitor supports it. So we'll simply go into display settings in our Windows computer and we'll change it from duplicate to extend. And now you can see that is using the full screen capabilities. Select monitor two and then scroll down and see what resolution, look at that, 1200. So that's 1200 dots all the way down the side. Uh, and that makes a difference. Now you can see in this image right here that my 15.6 inch laptop is almost the same as the 16 inch screen. I'll have no trouble transporting this. This is very thin, very, very light. This unit doesn't have a battery and actually makes a, a note of it saying down here that, hey, this unit doesn't have a battery. You need to have some power connected to it. And Windows, I see, has set this to 150% resolution. I do not want that. I want it set to 100%. I want things not to be larger. There we go. Now I can see a lot more on that screen. Yes, things are smaller, but that's what the screen is capable of. And let's listen to some audio. I'll just go into sound on my Windows PC. And oh, you probably can't hear that, but yes, it's coming. The, the sound is actually coming out of there. Let's go into the menu, the bottom here, and we'll go down to audio settings and the volume is only at 50%. We're going to turn that up all the way up. We want that the hardware to be set at maximum volume. Now let's try this again. Okay, still pretty quiet, but it's there. And let's go look at some of the other settings. Usual color contrast stuff. Uh, OSD always seems to confuse people. Uh, all that means is on-screen display. In other words, this. Okay, and just before we get on to connecting this Ingnock screen to that phone, which happens to be a Samsung Galaxy S22, uh, but it would be the same for an iPhone or other devices, um, what, let, what we want to do is just go over a couple of quick numbers. The viewing angle on this is 178 degrees, so it's pretty close uh, to flat. You can look at it almost from the, from the, from the extremes. Uh, another number that you, might just seem innocuous to you, but actually makes a difference, is that it's 95% sRGB. And sRGB is a color scale rating. 95% um, sRGB is I think about 70% Adobe. And what that boils down to is, you see most of the colors. So for corporate use, it'll be perfect. For uh, gaming, it'll be perfect. If you are a graphic designer, however, and that exact color has to be uh, accurately displayed on the screen, this probably isn't the unit for you. All right, let's plug it into the phone. Because this phone is a Samsung, in particular a Galaxy, I expect that Samsung DeX is going to come up. And basically what's going to happen is it's going to turn that phone into a full Chromebook when we connect it to this screen. And let's see what actually happens here. So I have plugged the phone that we're recording on into the USB cable that they've provided, and let's plug it in. Look at that. Beautiful, came up with Samsung DeX. And let's see if my phone can uh, power this unit. I'm going to unplug the power. Oh, look, it did work, yes, no kidding. It's just a little dimmer. Uh, that's really great. Okay, so there is a minor catch here if you wanna use this as a Chromebook. Um, you would need to get a wireless set that connects to your phone. So a wireless keyboard and mouse that you can use Bluetooth to connect to your phone. Because there are only two ports on the Ingnock 16. One of the ports is going to be consumed with the cable going to your phone. And the second is almost certainly going to be connected to power. Because it is just blowing through the power here. A few minutes ago this was at 32% and now it's down to 25. In other words, yeah, this will actually pull the, batter, pull the, the juice on your phone. but. It's not a good idea. You probably don't want to do that. So would we recommend the Ingnock 16 inch WUXGA portable monitor? Yeah, we really would. Uh, what's the problems with it? Well, the speaker is pretty terrible, but you're not buying it for that most likely. And it could certainly could use an additional USB port. Having two of them is good. Three or four would be much better. And other than that, nothing's wrong with it. What's right with it is that it connects with everything. Your iPhone, your Samsung phone, Xbox, PlayStation, PS4, and even get this, laptops and PCs. You can use it as a portable monitor when you need it. The color is good enough. 
The resolution is very high by 1920 pixels or dots across by 1200 dots down vertically. It's incredibly light at just a pound and a half. It's very, very thin. And because it's no larger than any other laptop, it'll fit in your bags and travel just beautifully. So for our corporate use, it's gonna be great. It also probably make a great present for a kid that rolls around with his Nintendo Switch or whatever else. But for us, it's all about the corporate use. So hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. It really helps with the Google algorithms. Uh, subscribes also always appreciated. And if you have a question or concern, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.ur teceh.ca that's www.urtech.ca or just use the comment section below and uh, if we don't get back to you somebody else will because on youtube everybody has an opinion thanks and have a great day bye bye